Hi everyone, I'm John and this is Kaylee. And we're the Stadium Couple. And we are going on our way out tonight. We're going to Newcastle Theatre Royal to an exclusive event at the Mamma Mia UK tour. Yeah, we're going to go backstage, going to talk to some of the cast and we're going to get to see the show. So come along on my journey and we hope you like it. See, see you soon. soon. Suits. That is my favourite scene, I love it so much. Everywhere we go we try and stick to this same um, configuration. So this is um, like a wig and hair station. So every time the girls mainly come off stage they come here and have their hair either touched up or changed completely. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> So we have three <coughs> touring wardrobe staff, and then they have five dresses, six, oh, wow. oh, yeah. six dresses in every venue. And so every week or every every move, every venue we get to, um, they have to go through all the cue sheets with their six dresses oh, and wow. teach them the plots. So all the sound equipment for the show. Plenty of wires. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> This groove in the floor normally yeah. travels down here and then okay. curves round and you can push the boat, there's like a boat that goes into this on like a little set of pins that keep All it right, in place. Okay. So it just kind of swings round on stage but because of this massive bit of water. You can't have that far <laughs> in. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> The only pond mics. Yeah. Does it stop or not? Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little monitors everywhere as well, so that they can do the BVs off stage, so like in vocals. All right. Okay. So they can't see the MVs. Oh yeah. So that's the MVs. Yeah. Like when the MVs out. That's where he stands in the pit. Um, corners of the trucks oh, okay. so to put them. and then the little black ones with numbers are for all the chairs in the wedding scene yeah so and then they come on in a certain order so the cast are supposed to see those yeah. as they come on yeah they do they don't yeah, they? To some really? extent, I mean, it's more yeah it's a guide they, they don't use them as much now yeah like once they get used to where they're putting them it's more of a i oh, just make sure i'm in the right place yeah they used to not have them they used to have to just yeah. recognize the shape of the stone wow really so you can remember your stone and all yeah. these. Well, that, they did that in yeah. yeah. So these are all the chairs that go on those black dots. Oh, okay. So all the chairs have numbers. And they correspond to the numbers on the floor. There you go. There's your number. A pause in the show because of a technical difficulty. How do the cast find out about that? Because it just so, seems so slick every time we've yeah, noticed that. So normally what happens is the uh, stage manager, which tonight will be myself, um, will walk onto stage or stand in the wing and we'll just go, we're going to have to stop. Okay. So it'll shout it out to the cast and they'll come off stage oh, when okay. they're told to. Yeah. On this show sometimes we have issues with our, so there's low smoke that happens in the show, like kind of low lying fog. It relies on CO2 to work. Like right. it cools it down with CO2. We have to monitor the musicians in the pit to make sure that we're not putting too much CO2 into <laughs> there, basically make sure that they don't have 
you know, too much CO2 in here. Right, yeah, but, you don't want to kill your orchestra. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but if, if for any reason the level gets too high, we have to take the orchestra out of the pit. Wow, right. But that can happen in like 10 seconds. So it's one of those things like you don't get a lot of warning or something like that. So yeah. then sometimes it's not quite as slick because you go, no, we're just going to have to stop flat out stop. for safety. Yeah. And how often has that happened? Um, we had it once here uh, at the start of the run here, um, but it doesn't happen regularly. I'm going to take you up to Sharon now. Right. So Sharon plays Donna. On our show. I'm playing Rosie yeah. in the show. Uh, I'm Sharon and I play Donna. Donna. I'm Helen and I play Tanya. We normally have a wig, so I look very different to our show. <laughs> very glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to you guys to be in Mamma Mia? Mm. It's a lovely show and it's because it's been running for so long, it's actually, it's a big deal for me. Yeah. I'm for stepping into it because it's something that has like existed long before I've even been in the business. It was one of the first auditions that I did like nearly 20 years ago was for the daughter. Yeah. And so to actually be, yeah. yeah. And it was my first time I ever got a flight over to London and went in and did my first audition and came out and just went, whoa, what is, <laughs> what is this world? Yeah. So to be back then Donna is really yeah. cool. It feels like a nice little tick to be in a show that's run this long. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think when you get as well, for like our age, when you yeah. get older in this industry, there are certain parts that you, would love to play obviously for me this is yeah. definitely yeah. one of those yeah. parts that you kind of go that's on my bucket list of yeah, yeah exactly of characters so I can yeah. tick it off but it's, yeah. you know, it's it's nice to do that it's such a feel good show it's just like all ages everyone loves Every, it and yeah. it's so yeah. lovely I mean just today oh it might nearly break my heart just seeing really old women standing up dancing <laughs> and you're like god that reminds me of my nana she really loved this yeah. and you know just all age groups you, you know yeah, they are having the best long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was so like on it. Tuesday afternoon in the matinee, there was like a an older lady, and she must have been in her early seventies, who had holding the hand of like oh, was like child. Child. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. five yeah. or six, yeah. and they were right on the front row in the middle. And you, you right. when you see that, you can't help just go, oh god. What did you do your dream role? My dream role is Mrs. Johnson and Blood Brothers. Because oh. yeah. I am, I am from Liverpool. Oh, well. yeah. 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 That's my dream role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Bill Kenwright, if you listen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do Mama Rose and Gypsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not until for a while. Not for a while, but yeah. I would say, yeah, that's, that's on right. my book. On your list. list. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I don't know. I've done, I've, yeah, She's I've done, done them all. I've done them all. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of wonderful roles and so, yeah, I, mm -hmm. it's really difficult when people ask me that question. Yeah. Because I love, I love this and... I love creating new characters, so hopefully there's something that hasn't been done yet, but yeah. that's the, the next the role that I like to do, yeah. yeah, yeah, instead of doing a takeover, which is great, but you, I yeah, love of being the first person to create a character, mm. yeah. so yeah. I, yeah, I look forward to doing Put that. Put your own stamp on yeah. it and no one else has done yeah. before. Yeah, so I suppose in terms of roles, obviously apart from these ones, what has been one that's resonated with you the most or has meant so much to you or, or is really like the one that you would go to and you'd say, and mm -hmm. someone says, well, who have you played? And what's the I one that comes Dan, to you? My, my favourite one was I played Zelda Fitzgerald in this show called Beautiful and Damned. Sadly, it, the show didn't do well, but it was one of those roles that if I could write a role for me, it was, was that, that was it. Yeah. It was in the West End and it was just everything that I dreamt of it was um, in a part. I got to age from like 16 up to 44. I went from like this, you know, young bombshell to someone in a mental asylum. I played every wow. single emotion, danced every t different type of dance. I mean, it was just like ridiculous. It sadly only lasted three months. So oh, I, that so will sad. always be my, that was, that was it. Yeah. And Eliza Doolittle in my village. That was yeah. a role that I never thought I would ever play. And then I did that only a few years ago, and it was that was like, oh my god, why have I never thought of this before? It was <laughs> so much fun. That's so amazing. much fun. Because you play two characters in that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Real yeah. challenge. So yeah, that was yeah, me. You? Cool. Me. Um, I don't know, I think whenever I'm playing a part, I always get really stupidly attached to it. Do you know that kind yeah. of way? And for me now at the moment, Donna feels like that. I've, mm. Even though the role's been played by so many people, that there's such a big part of me in her. Yeah. And that might sound really stagey and really weird, but like it is, when you're playing a role like that, that it almost becomes like a friend, do you know what yeah. I mean? That yeah. you want to do proud. I really feel like that with this role at the moment. Um, Bad Out of Hell was the last show I did, and it was an original show. So okay. Sloan was an original character. So for me, that is all my heart and soul, and so yeah. much of me went into mm. that. But she's kind of grown legs now, and other people are playing her. So yeah. I'd say, um, 
say this one for the moment. That's yeah, really that's good. Good. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. for me, yeah, Rosie is definitely, and it's very me. Like yeah, I, am, yeah. I am very Rosie, so yeah. for me, but I mean, I did Madame Tenardier, I covered that in town and that was great, but that was so far removed from yeah. that. Yeah. And then, but I, well, I don't know, Shirley Valentine. Valentine. Yeah. yeah. I did the one woman play a few, a couple of years ago and that was like, yeah. Same thing, you must get so yeah. attached to that character yeah. though, especially when yeah. she goes through, you're yeah. like... And she ends up on a Greek island as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a theme. What's your favourite part to perform in the show? I love Chikatita. Chikatita is us trying to make her laugh. Yeah. And we tend to make each other laugh a lot, which is very difficult to work with because, you know. <laughs> uh, but um, it's... Every day I have so much fun in yeah. that, I think. Super Trooper as well, yeah. because it's, that's the that's the moment yeah. where just the girl, it's all yeah. the girls yeah. on stage it's... together. So that's quite, as a female, that's quite an empowering moment to just be like, this is just the women. Yeah, yeah. And you can mm -hmm. see, you know, the audience get really into that one as well. So mm -hmm. that, that's another, yes. I mean, they're all good numbers. Really. It changes for me, I think, depending on the humor I'm in as well. Yeah. Some nights yeah. I want to have a good sob and slipping through your fingers brings me there. Yeah. Yeah. And then other nights, Super Trooper as well. It's just yeah. that, or just the bedroom dancing queen is so much yeah. fun. Do you know what I mean? They're all little yeah. gems. Yeah. Every yeah. song is such a little, like a nugget of gold. They mm -hmm. really are. So, all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm Emma and I play Sophie. I'm Toby and I'm Grace Grant. How long do you have to rehearse for the show? Four weeks. Four weeks. And then yeah. straight to. Four weeks and then the coming take. And then we just talk. Yeah. Uh, what does like Mamma Mia mean to you? Is there like a certain. Um, I'm not sure, like memories, or is, is there something specific about the, the show that means a lot to you? Yeah, I, I think for me, like, I, I've always loved the show, and like, um, I remember seeing it in like, well, I did the maths, and I think it was 2004, and it probably reopened, which was really cool. Um, and like, my mum's always loved the show, I say this like every time, but she loves it, <laughs> like, she, <laughs> she's always loved the show, so like, when I when I said, like, I, I think I want to be an actor, she was like, yeah, well, it's all you do, Mamma Mia. Like, it's fine, like, so, it's like, and that's a special job to me because I'm like, it's just for my mum, obviously. That's I mean, so I love really it, nice. but it's like, my mum's. <laughs> <laughs> you were literally just saying in there, it's like a show for everyone, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really is. All sorts love it. Like, you look, I love looking out into the audience after, and you'll see, like, a little girl up dancing, and then her dad, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like and like, ev like everyone loves it because it's just so feel good and everyone can relate to it. And it's like, what's your favourite number to perform? Oh, oh, or does it change? Oh, I change think it's like, does it? Yeah, I think oh. at the minute, I think at the minute, mine's just thank you for, for the music, the one with the dance. Oh, okay. Yeah, just because it's really sweet and there's a lot going on and it's like it's really fun to play. But then I think like maybe the most feel good is like. Water at the end. Yeah, yeah, mine's definitely the finale. Like yeah, okay. you can have the worst day, like actors as well. You know, us on stage, yeah. we could literally, yeah, you know, you can get some bad news, some terrible news or whatever. Yeah. And you, you just go in and you do that number for yeah. 10 minutes, and everyone is just yeah. having the time of their life. You remember why you're doing it, don't yeah, you? Yeah. You look out and people are like, ah, it would be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 what would you say is your favorite show? It would have to be Les Mis, yeah, yeah. which is kind of gross. But um, yeah, it was the first show I ever saw, first show I ever did at the church, first show I ever was in, um, first date my parents went on. Like, I guess the show just has a lot of meaning to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I had an amazing year doing it, so probably that, but I guess it could change. Oh, come yeah. away. oh my god, oh, so uh, still haven't seen it. Yeah, you, oh, it. you have to see it, it's so good. Yeah, it's going out. Yeah, it's going yeah. Out. Honestly, it's we won't do the show. <laughs> we'll go on tonight. <laughs> if you could describe the show or explain the show to somebody who's not seen it before, like a reason to come and see it, or, or how would you sum it up? Uh, a reason to come see it, I would say, is because you'll leave happier than you were when you came in. Definitely. Like, uh, yeah, I challenge anyone to not. Like, you can't, you can't leave it and be like, oh. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's so feel good. Yeah. Yeah, second that. That's yeah. literally just the main reason. I'm Rob Fowler and I play Sam Carmichael. Uh, Jamie Kenner and I play Bill Austin. 
And I'm Daniel Crowder and I play Harry Bright. It's one of your favourite roles that you've done. Like, like I've, I've not done a musical, it's my first musical. It's your first musical, oh, yeah. oh, so, wow. Uh, it, was, it was a whole can of worms out for me, dancing and singing yeah. and talking <laughs> and walking at the same time. Um, so yeah, I'd, I mean, it's, it's, and hopefully it won't be my last one now, because yeah, it's definitely. really opened my eyes to this whole other world. I definitely pursued it. I wanted to play Harry, and I spoke to my agent, and we talked about it. But it was more the fact that you get a nice long contract. As an actor, sometimes you're used to just doing very short contracts yeah. in theatre, <laughs> on TV or whatever, but I did The Mouse Trap in 2014, and that was my first real long contract in the West End. It just suited me. It didn't suit a lot of actors repeating the same yeah. thing night after night for a year. But it did me, and so when I sat down with my scratch my head and was like, "What? What are what the shows going to be in?" And like Jamie, I've seen a lot of people come through the show, and someone once said to me, "In Bratislava, um, you'd be a good Harry." And so I ran with that and said to my agent, "Can I play Harry?" And he went, opened the door. There you went, go. Yeah. So good. It's 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 great to be around um, colleagues that come from straight acting and to see their take on it. Well, yeah. I come from mainly musical theatre and I've played some wonderful roles, whether it's leading Starlight Express or Cats or Jesus or We Will Rock You or Bat Out of Hell or Rocky Horror Show, all musicals. So to come in with these guys and how they pull scenes back, it's been a refreshing and refreshing change and, and um, also a learning curve and I'll take that with me from this job. I really will. Yeah. It's, um, made me um, not so much listen more, but to react more natural, if that is allowed to be said. So do you guys say you've learned anything specific from your co-actors or anything that has really sort of clicked with you on, on this tour that you've the thought? Guitar. Right. I had to learn how to play the guitar. Oh, oh wow, there we go. Demo, Exclusive. It's my, it's my first, this is, a, this is the first covered guitar. The this real one, the real guitar. But the story goes, I auditioned for the part and I got the part and I didn't know I had to play the guitar. <laughs> and I was at a wedding and um, an MD was at the wedding and he said, you do know you play the guitar in the show? And I said, no, I've got no idea. I've never picked a guitar up in my life. I've got no <laughs> aptitude for it whatsoever. But Harry Bright hasn't played the guitar for 21 years. That's a D. So now I'm playing a D. It's taken me forever to learn. But I did go straight onto eBay. I went back from the wedding, I went straight onto eBay and bought a guitar, a guitar two weeks before the rehearsals began. I had one guitar lesson. You still have it? Yeah. Got it in and I still play really bad notes sometimes, don't I? But I've, that's what I've learned. But that's enjoyable. I've learned yeah. how to play the guitar-ish. Well, I've learned how to play Thank You for the Music. I was going to say, have you learned anything other than no. ABBA music on it then? No, I haven't anything else. Bob tries to teach me how to play other things, and I'm like, I can't play the pretty much, pretty much everyone in this building can play the guitar. guitar we were one. 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 We I sing the least out of everyone. Um, but the discipline of singing, the, the vocal strain, um, how to look after your voice, how to look after yourself, that's been a massive learning curve for me, huge learning, because I just thought, oh, I'll do this, then I might go on and do some other musicals, yeah. but it's made me go, I can't actually sing, I can, I can, I've got a nice tone and I can hold a bit of a tune, but this is singing, you know, and these guys in this building are, you know, this man over here has got to get that man in there eating his broccoli. Um, <laughs> like these guys are proper, they're, they're proper singers. They've got like technique. I didn't mean to leave you out. I'm Dan as well. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, so the technique, it's, it's been fascinating for me to learn um, how to preserve your voice, how to get the most out of it. And also it's really cemented the fact that I can't go on. That'll just add to the character though. It's great. Bill's yeah. yeah. meant Absolutely. to be a bad dancer. Yeah. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> yeah. I was going home having sleepless nights <laughs> with the, the learning of voodoo and things like that, which I now just about get away with, but my God, it's, it's hard. So I, yeah, I've learned a lot. Dan's going to give you an example. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's technical music though, isn't it? It is, it's lovely. It's actually, it's, it's just great. Like I, I've said this before, but you just surrender to the music. Yeah. And yeah. And, um, they're just notorious for writing fantastic hook lines. Yeah. You know, in the words of George Martin, if you write a good hook line, that's half, your, half the battle done, and then they just write such great lyrics with it. And as Jamie said earlier, that um, the lyrics just fit so well to this story. Yeah. I think, I think as well, I, and I genuinely mean this, 
that I've done Panto, for example, and it's like a you know three or four week whirlwind where they use some pop song or they use something you know current. Uh, and by the time you get to the end of that three week, four week Panto run, you never want to hear that song again. Right? <laughs> I genuinely, my kids are really obsessed with this show because obviously I'm in it. They've seen, they've seen it a few times, so they're always playing Mamma Mia the soundtrack and all of that. And I don't ever, and I go home singing the songs. Even you though I've done a two show day, yeah. I will yeah. go home and I will be singing Actually, more blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere you go, it's in department stores, in restaurants, yeah. we just had a two week break after Dublin. People went to every corner of the world and we were sending videos of who sat in a bar in Bali and they'd yeah. be like Dancing Queen playing in the corner. Do you remember we went to that restaurant in Paris between shows? Yeah, they were playing the soundtrack. They were playing the soundtrack. <laughs> just can't part escape it. Lives, part of our makeup. But it, yeah. the music's great. It does it, it, it wouldn't, I don't think I'll ever do that thing of like, oh God, I will always, it will always hold a nice place in my heart to hear yeah. and have a song. It will mean more to me now than it would have done before. But no, it's, it's so well written and it's got such a good recipe and the structure of it that it really makes people connect. Yeah. And there's wonderful moments in here, whether it's Bill and Sophie in the name of the game or Harry and Donna in our last summer. There's so much reminiscing nostalgia with this, but they've made it so modern. Even though it's 20 years old, it's one that will stand the test of time, it has stood the test of time, and it continues to introduce these songs, which are story-driven to the youth of today, yeah. but also makes the the, the, the the older generation, whether they're 40, 50, 60 years old, reminisce and um, yeah. connect. Yeah, sometimes we were listening to Neil Diamond the other day. Mm. I'm a big Neil Diamond fan. And the reason I love Neil Diamond is because he tells stories and his songs build, they kind of build a crescendo. And, mm, and, and if you look, uh, if you listen to the Abba songs, you know, take Boulé Vu and then you so listen to Slip It Through Your Fingers. Thank you. Through, like, to, have, to have written songs like that is genius. It is, there's nothing short of genius. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that, you're writing little plays, you're writing little vignettes of plays. And slipping through my fingers, that's that's completely, completely different. Yeah, totally yeah. different. And I've got little kids, and that breaks my heart. I can't actually watch it or listen to it because I'm away from my kids. And yeah. you know, my little girl was growing up; she's six, going on twenty-six. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it, it's it's genius. It's utter genius. Hey everyone, we're in the theatre now. We've just finished all of the interviews. The camera died halfway through because I'm unprepared and didn't charge the battery. So I switched to the phone so you might notice a bit of a quality difference there, but hopefully it's not all in it too much. Yeah, and we're going to show you around the theatre before we get to watch the show. So, so enjoy. Cheers. want to do a quick round up to finish off with video um we've got our mamma mia sunglasses on from yeah. the theater and i'm gonna take mine off so i can and see I'm better keep mine on because <laughs> i feel like i look cooler in this uh yeah so basically we loved the show it's, it's so fun the cast were amazing um it was just really both. funny yeah uh, we were just laughing so much and everybody was on their feet we at the like, end we we're like this lady yeah that was our reactions <laughs> So yeah, it was just a lot of fun, wasn't it? We had a great night yeah. and would really recommend seeing it on tour this year. You'll come out and you'll be singing all the songs. And yeah. Yeah, it's just really a fun night out, so get yourself along. So, uh, we just want to say a quick thank you to 
Jill at Theatre Royal for the opportunity and to Maria for the tour as well, it was excellent. Yeah. And uh, thanks to all the cast that we chatted to as well, your answers were just so good. It was heartbreaking and really hard to cut down enough to even make this video less than half an hour. So thank you so much yeah, to all of you. Thank you for taking the time to chat to us. It, like, it means a lot and we had like the best time. Yeah, it's And brilliant. good luck on the rest of you, the tour. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see you again. We will. Okay. Yeah. Thanks all. Bye.